Right, the whips have agreed that item, one, item 22, the motion on regeneration of the Wynn Stanley and York Roads estates, will be taken next. Can I ask Councillor Caddy to move and Councillor Cook to second the motion in their names? I move the motion. There is a, an amendment to this motion that has been circulated. Can I ask Councillor Hogg to move and Councillor White to second the amendment? Uh, moved. Ned. Councillor Caddy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. When I joined the Council in 2012, the regenerations had just been announced. And I was so impressed by the scope of the idea and the huge difference that it would make for many of our residents. But I have to admit, especially coming straight out of a by-election campaign, that I was a bit worried about the politics that might be played with it. But I was wrong to worry, because actually it was with huge pleasure and hope that I listened to the debates on the schemes, and I saw that there was genuine collaboration and support from both of the main parties, given that we were dealing with a project that would quite literally be life-changing for many of our residents. And I was absolutely delighted when all of the ward councillors involved supported the plans to improve these two areas. And actually, I think it's just a great example of councillors working together for the good of their communities. And so I would genuinely like to thank them all for that. At the time, we set out ambitious and detailed aims for the regenerations. We consulted on options extensively with residents through a process which was recognised by everybody involved as being very thorough, fair and really best in class in terms of engaging residents and harnessing their views. Those plans were then agreed unanimously and we have worked towards them ever since. And what is so central to those aims are the current residents of both of the areas. And I'll let some of my colleagues in their speeches go into some of the detail on what we're doing, but I just want to give you the big picture on these schemes, particularly compared to what is going on elsewhere, because actually that is relevant, because of course there are constraints on how we and everyone else can get things done, because we all know that regeneration is a complicated and an expensive process. So, we are committing over £250 million of taxpayers' money to redevelop those two estates. We are offering some of the best terms to our residents, both leaseholders and tenants. We can't find an example of a better offer anywhere else. Our tenants are remaining our tenants. We're not transferring them to registered providers. No other borough is doing that on this scale. Just to put this in context, thousands of social rented homes have been lost during regenerations over the past 10 years. And that's actually why the mayor's policy has shifted to a no net loss of social rented homes. We're actually gaining 140 social rented homes as a result of these schemes. And overall, we're gaining nearly 500 affordable homes. Now, that is just excellent by any standards, and it certainly exceeds the Mayor's standards. And actually, that's before we even start talking about jobs and community facilities. These schemes are a fantastic deal for our residents. We are getting this right, and we are fulfilling the original aims of the regeneration to transform those estates and make them into genuine mixed communities. And actually, I'm just going to steal a quote uh, from someone to illustrate how important this is. There is a big prize, a template for regeneration of our estates into mixed, integrated communities. We shouldn't tolerate enclaves of great deprivation or great wealth. We want neighbourhoods where people from all walks of life can meet in the street, share public spaces, and be proud that their children thrive in the same schools, libraries and playgrounds. Well, I think that was well said, Councillor Hogg, and I hope you can get behind these plans which deliver exactly that. Yeah. Changing these plans now to add affordable housing would involve changing contracts with the developers that we all agreed to. As the answer, I think, to question 18 makes very clear, 
it would be more expensive than investing in affordable housing elsewhere and it would delay and change what we are offering residents. And you know what, the one thing that I've heard more from people on both of those estates is that they're worried that this won't happen. They are worried that their vision won't be realised. And actually changing and delaying those plans now would be letting our residents down and it would be breaking the promises that we've all made them. And I won't do that. So I would urge you to support this motion. White, Councillor White. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, when, re when regenerating, we should not simply state what we have is bad and therefore anything we put in its place is good. In the two Wandsworth regenerations, over 2,500 extra private cost, market cost homes will be delivered in the regeneration, while only 33 extra council houses and 222 shared ownership homes will be built. And let's be clear, 80% of market is not affordable. Okay? And the other 86 are reprovisions. They're not new houses. So it is quite clear that public land is being used to achieve profit, change the social makeup of the two areas and deny homeless, lower and middle income people the opportunity to share in the regeneration spoils. The new social infrastructure is all very welcome on this side of the chamber for, the, for these socially deprived areas. But what about the 2,000 homeless families and over 2,700 children without a home this Christmas? In inadequate temporary accommodation and bed and breakfast, what about the families placed out of borough and the attendant health and well-being issues, their children's disturbed education and remote support networks? What about the 6,500 people on various waiting lists? What about the average and lower earners? What about the people in overcrowded homes? What about the social deprivation and poor health outcomes brought about by the inadequate housing in the wider regeneration areas? What about the families stuck in overpriced private rented accommodation, worried about a Section 21 eviction and those facing no DSS signs? What about the sofa surfers, the young and the not-so-young people still living in their parents' home because they cannot afford the expensive baubles in the windows of the Regeneration Christmas shop in which we invite them to press their noses this Christmas? When these regenerations were muted, there was, only, there was roughly 400 homeless uh, in Bondsworth. As such, the work put in by the local councillors at that time to seek to improve these areas were noble and correct, and better than the position I witnessed in the Brocklebank estate in Oldsfield in 2013, where leaseholders were to be given market rates for their council estate homes and told to buy a home locally, an impossible task. So again, I pay tribute to the Roehampton and Latchmere councillors. However, since then, the housing crisis has reached epidemic proportions, with rises in homelessness year on year, more and more rough sleepers huddled in shop fronts, a national 80% cut in council house building since the last Labour government, when £3 billion plus a year was invested in social housing, and a council that has seen only 69 council homes on average built a year, just 5% of the borough total. All we ask is for 170 extra council homes in regenerations of almost 4,000 uh, uh, 4, homes on land that was, was once exclusively reserved for council housing and where the ratio of council homes to private homes will be flipped around and all the time refusing £60 million GLA affordable grant, refusing to invest extra borrowing as the borrowing cap is lifted, welcomed as one of the most significant policy developments for many years that will boost council house building of stable, low-cost homes for rent by the leader of this council. And with the hundreds of millions of pounds these regenerations were always bound to make, even if they are flipped to market rent, should their government's cack-handed inability to run a whelk stall turns the housing market on its head. 
As we are warned, we will scare developers, ignoring other local councils like Croydon and Hammersmith, renegotiating for extra affordable homes or significant sums to build affordable homes, and there seems to be no issue to add private cell homes to these regions when their developer friends complain about not making enough hundreds of millions of pounds. And then I wonder about the two recent selections of parliamentary candidates. Is my opposite number, and congratulations to her, going to use as her Battersea campaign slogan, I defend the building of yet more homes you cannot afford on land that is theirs, uh, there for you... Sorry, I'll, I'll do that again. I defend the building of yet more homes who you cannot afford on land that is there for homes you should be able to. Against our Putney selection, and congratulations to Fleur, who can say Ray Roehampton should be for the many and not the few, and public land should be for an inclusive community, not an exclusive community. As we return to our warm and secure decent homes for Christmas, I hope that enough of the members opposite might reflect on those who will not enjoy that basic right and think, have I done enough to bring decency to 170 Wandsworth families? You don't need Santa Claus, it's in your gift. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Previous research has suggested that regeneration, by its very definition, should bring to the fore issues of representation, stakeholders, partnerships, and community empowerment in order to mobilize grassroots activity. This was a book written in 2017 called Urban Regeneration. And according to some of the research, and more recent research, such an approach has evolved further over the past decade to include new or strengthened relationships between regeneration, housing, health, and other aspects of social welfare and cohesion. The link before, between poor physical conditions and social deprivation has been well documented, and there are now desires to produce environmental, environmentally sustainable developments. And actually, I welcome the fact that the Council has targeted Roehampton as in need of regeneration carried out a needs consultation to ensure that those who live in the demolition area today will have their needs met in the new buildings, continued negotiation with TfL to better connect the two communities under regeneration. With regard to the heights, I leave my thoughts as best expressed by Le Corbusier, who actually did the buildings within Rehampton. A hundred times have I thought New York is a catastrophe, and 50 times it is a beautiful catastrophe. Height of these homes, however, if they include the affordable homes we're looking for, then they are worthy. I also welcome the fact that the council desires to produce an environmentally sustainable development. And I actually thank Councillor Sutters because we, between us, we are going to go to TfL to push for an extended bus route in Rohanson. The definition of urban regeneration is a comprehensive and integrated vision and action which seeks to resolve urban problems and bring about a lasting improvement in the economic, physical, social and environmental condition of an area that has been subject to change and offers opportunities for development. Since the Victorian times, there has been a search for practical ways of delivering social justice alongside economic progress, including approaches that attempt to strengthen social ties in order to revitalize disadvantaged communities. This is where the however comes in. The social justice, however, and the revitalization of our disadvantaged community in terms of our Alton regeneration needs to include the extra 17 new social rent homes, which at present aren't included. The council has shown good intentions towards the Alton regeneration, but also needs to resolve wider urban problems, unquote again of an acute lack of homes that are affordable. The point of regenerations is to solve housing shortages. This not only affects key workers such as teachers and NHS employees, but also by definition affects our schools and NHS systems as the people who work in these challenging jobs quite simply cannot afford to live in London. 
Analysis by Dr. Alan Holman, CBE of the UK Housing Review, identifies what we all know. Affordability in London is typically worse than elsewhere. The difference between London and the rest of the UK is now uniquely high. The World Habitat Organization quotes, I believe that everyone has the right to safe, decent, affordable homes, and research has also identified that the main cause of homelessness and the hidden homeless is the lack of housing. This morning on the news, the number of homeless children has doubled, and the figure of homeless children in the December 2018 report from Shelter are appalling. To end, and why I challenge the Council to accept our amendment, to quote Hausner, 1993, we need to be a regeneration that includes a strategic framework for city-wide development. I therefore challenge the Council to pursue the affordable homes agenda, which will solve problems for key workers, but goes some way to solving the homeless problems. I support the regeneration, but I cannot support the planned small number of social housing that are planned within the regeneration. I therefore urge you to accept our amendment because I, and I end on a quote by Le Corbusier again, those who pursue an ideal and fight for it have to be made of steel. I believe you have this steel and you could make good use of it. Thank you. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The other day, I was having a, a philosophical moment and I, I was pondering to myself, what, what makes us want to do this? Now, I admit I was having a bad day. And let's be honest in this chamber, we've all had those days where we do wonder why we're sitting here, standing here and having some of these debates. But on a, on a serious point, the answer to that always used to be because we want to make a difference across the chamber here. And unfortunately, I think that's something that's changed in recent times. And, and that's a shame because Councillor Caddy has referred to how there's been a great deal of cross-party cooperation on this kind of thing. This, these are massive schemes we're talking about here that are going to have a significant impact on the populations of some of the poor areas of our borough for years and years to come. And that fact that I thought we could all work together was something that was bigger than our political squabbles between ourselves. And tonight there's been a degree of equanimity about various things, and that's encouraging to see. But then we get uh, people stand up, and they grandstand. They're using it as a political football. Councillor Brown said earlier on that we were doing that same kind of thing. And I just feel surely there are times when we need to look at the broader picture, and please, it's a plea really, to our colleagues on the other side. As Councillor Caddy said earlier on, uh, there's been a great history on these projects so far of us being able to work together and get things improved for the greater benefits of all our residents over the years to come. And I think the point of trying to play games and cause divisions within our communities when what the whole point of these schemes are going to do is to bring people together. We're mixing tenures. We're mixing people up together. We don't want poor doors. We don't want people on one side of the street feeling like they're second-class citizens to other citizens. These are new communities together. We're a mixed community. We're a mixed community within this house. In the, and the people here, we're... The, 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 the way that we're depicted as stereotypes uh, is really not helpful to getting things done in a constructive way here. We want to make things better, and we're not going to make things better by squabbling. And the, the biggest turn-off we get these days is political infighting and squabbling. Watch at any episode of Question Time these days with real people, members of the public, and it is a massive turn-off if all we're doing is bickering about ourselves and trying to make bigger picture political statements. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to serve our communities and to make them better and to make sure that everybody in our areas profits and has the best chance of success in the future. The Aspirations Programme that this council has been running for years is something that's had incredible success. Councillor Cook was referring earlier, so we've got uh, uh, the higher social mobility, uh, second highest social mobility in, in, in the country. That's an incredible thing to achieve, and we can do much better on this kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a plea, please, for a little bit of 
of equanimity. Let's work together on this kind of thing and make life better for all our communities. And there's been some very sensible comments tonight, but I really don't think it helps by inflaming communities and pitching people against each other with false arguments and speculation. We've got a costed plan that we know will work. And let's not spend the next five years of this pro these projects of throwing in random numbers about some numbers of affordable housing. We've got a costed scheme which will deliver homes and we need homes. We all know this. We need homes for people to live in now and as soon as we can. And that's what we're working on together. So please, let's cooperate. Let's carry on that spirit we've done and please support this motion altogether. Thank you. Councillor Arland, maiden speech. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm very proud to be a councillor in West Hill and to have the chance to represent my community. I would like to thank my ex-work colleague, Councillor Walsh, for his encouragement. Um, he and I were part of a small group of colleagues who regularly discussed and often argued about politics over lunch. And it was Councillor Walsh who first suggested to me that I should get involved in local politics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a nice University of London Estates Department bookend, bookend here because Councillor Walsh won West Hill Award from Labour in 1974 and it remained Conservative, although lately with an Independent, for the next 44 years until May this year. I am also very grateful for the support and help from my fellow West Hill Ward councillors, Carpenter and Grimston. Both are very experienced and have been very helpful to me. And I would like to thank you both. Thank you. Um, I believe in judging people by their motives rather than their views. I'm used to working in a culture based on the principles of professionalism, respect and mutual trust. And I hope to carry on with this approach as a local councillor. West Hill is a lovely place to live. Wimbledon Park and Wimbledon Common border it. My estate was built on the, built on the site of Edgecombe Hall and estate residents helped to restore the historic pond. There are many squirrels and woodpeckers in the trees and the views of London, Essex, Kent and Surrey from my balcony are fabulous. I'm lucky to live within walking distance of Southfield Station and Village and to have an excellent variety of independent shops and a very good local li library. For tennis fans, it is wonderful when for two weeks every year we have the Wimbledon Championships on our doorstep. I've been involved in my residence association for many years. As the chair for the past four years, I represent a diverse mixture of freeholders, leaseholders, council tenants and subtenants. I believe that resident participation should be encouraged and that users of council services should have a say in how they are managed. You can usually tell when there is an active residence association in a block or on, a, on an estate because they are better maintained. Schools, hospitals and other public organisations have places on their governing bodies for users of their services and they recognise that services are better when you involve users. I have often wondered why more members of the various residence panels do not become local councillors, because to me it should be a natural progression. Residence associations are non-political, but there is a limit to what you can achieve as a member of these panels. Many people do not realise how living in a council property was aspirational before the 1980s, but for those like me who grew up here in Wandsworth, in an overcrowded private rented accommodation without basic amenities, the idea of having a secure tenancy and a property with gas, electricity, an inside lavatory, hot water and a bathroom at a reasonable rent was an unattainable dream. All this has now changed. Now those living on council estates are often viewed as scroungers. Estates have changed. Nearly 50% of properties managed by this council are leasehold many of whom are owner-occupiers who, like me, purchased an ex-local authority property because it was just about affordable. The alternative is the private rented sector. Leaseholders are often demonised as greedy and exploitative, but in my experience, many of the volunteers who are active in residence associations are leaseholders who really care about their estate and community. 
We need more council homes and we need to look after the ones we have. It's so important to maintain council estates to high standards so that residents feel proud of where they live. Many residents feel helpless when dealing with the council and do not believe that the council listens to them. I do understand the reasons why some are reluctant to hold a ballot, but surely we want to ensure that the estate regeneration has the support of all those affected. Why wouldn't we want to give residents a clear say on whether the plan should go ahead? I became a councillor because I want to give a voice to all those residents living on estates who are sometimes forgotten. And it is a privilege to be a local councillor, but I will never forget that I'm also a resident. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arlen, for that um, very practical and somewhat magnanimous uh, maiden speech. Councillor Sweet. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think what we've heard from councillors on both sides is that when it comes to council housing, shared ownership and low-cost home ownership, we actually want the same thing. And that's why I think that the support of the Latchmere councillors in the regeneration of Winstanley York Road has been really welcome over the last few years. The housing shortage is too big for one party to solve on its own. And it's also too big for one borough to sort out on its own. And that's why I just want to speak a little bit about why I think we need to work together and why we need to put a little bit of pressure on City Hall to help us out. Council-led regeneration is not enough on its own to deliver the new homes that Wandsworth needs. Um, and I, I want to explain why I think that private development actually does have a role to play, contrary to what Councillor White has said. The Planning Committee at Wandsworth Council last year had given the highest number of planning permissions for new homes of any borough in London, including all of the Labour boroughs, absolutely at, at the top of uh, the London Borough League table, table. That puts us well ahead of GLA targets on housing, and that includes well ahead of targets on affordable housing too. That, I think, is Wandsworth holding up its side of the bargain. And the truth is that at Planning Committee, more often than not, when it comes to major developments, there is a consensus. We get support on both sides of, uh, of the table. But I want to talk about what happens after Wandsworth has done its bit, because it happens behind closed doors in City Hall, and I think it's actually quite shocking, and it's really important that councillors in this chamber, including on the Labour benches, understand what's happening. In one corner of Wandsworth alone, 1,000 new homes are currently stuck in a kind of vortex at City Hall. And that's because once we have given planning permission in Wandsworth, the onus switches over to the mayor and he has to give stage two approval. And if, if a development doesn't get stage two approval, even if every councillor in Wandsworth supported it, that development cannot be built. So 1,000 homes are currently stuck there. And I actually think Councillor White, who's clearly a very passionate man, might do well to direct that passion to City Hall. And I'm going to explain the, the two of those schemes and why, why it's a bit of a problem. On the B&Q site next to Wandsworth Town Station, we gave planning permission about 10 months ago for a development that, that would deliver 35% affordable housing, which is a really good number. But the Mayor of London insisted that he could do better. So he called it in at the stage two uh, uh, part of the process that I described. And um, the developer basically decided that they could not make the sums work that the Mayor was demanding. So after 10 months stuck in City Hall, they pulled out. And as a result, instead of getting 35% of 512 new homes, we've got 35% of zero new homes. <laughs> now, just, just over the road, on the other side of the road, the home base site. Now, this time, the mayor insisted on 35%, right from the outset. But planning permission is no good, so, so the developer got planning permission. But planning permission is no good if you can't actually afford to build out the scheme that you've been given permission for. And yet again, it took 18 months, but after 18 months, the developer has decided they cannot proceed. 
And as a result, instead of 35% of 385 new homes, we've got 35% of zero new homes. Wandsworth is doing more than any other borough when it comes to providing new social housing, as Councillor Caddy and others have said. But that's always going to be dwarfed by private sector development. Those 1,000 new homes that are currently lost because of City Hall's failure to, to, to see through what Wandsworth has begun, those 1,000 homes are 10 times what Labour are suggesting in this amendment for Winstanley, Winstanley York Road alone. So it's really significant numbers. We've got major house builders such as Barclay Homes, Barrett, Crest Nicholson currently saying that there's no opportunity for them to develop in London. That is absolutely mad. There is such a shortage of housing in London and yet all of the major developers are saying they can't build homes here. And the blame for that, I'm afraid, goes directly to the Mayor of London. So uh, I again would ask Councillor White to direct his passion to the Mayor of London. Let's unblock this system and actually get some, some homes being delivered. Personal uh, so explanation, I'm please. I, I will I've been mentioned, I've so personal explanation. Councillor White. The thing is, uh, you, you could have got £60 million from the, the Mayor of London. Absolutely no issue with that. You could have done it, and you could have built these homes easily, and you didn't do it. So stick to what the question is and what the amend amendment is. You could build these 170. You could have had uh, these Council 170. Vice, technically, that's not a not to. personal explanation. But perhaps some... Um, you gave I, I will just wrap up now. I mean, uh, you, you're asking for 170 new homes. With a little bit of a change of approach from the Mayor of London, you could get 1,000 new homes. Okay? So, you're, you're responsible. Um, but I'm, I'm actually su supporting this original motion because I believe that our cross-party cross approach in Wandsworth is actually quite unusual and it's very pragmatic. And I, I think that um, the most important part of this motion is about that cross-party cooperation. And I'm very proud that in March, on the Winstanley York Road first phase development, it was passed unanimously by planning committee and that's, that's going to bring 138 new homes. So I think that, that cross-party approach needs to continue. That's all I wanted to say. Councillor Hogg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm grateful for this um, absorbing debate and to the whips for allowing it to continue at this late hour. Um, the Winstanley estate desperately needs um, investment after years of neglect. Um, we recall the Kingan report into the Clapham Junction riots stated that that estate was in the worst 1% of places to grow up as a child in the UK. And as I said in the, to this chamber eight years ago in my maiden speech, I joined this council not to keep my ward the same, but to change it. And since I was elected, more than a dozen young men have been shot and several murdered on that estate, and local children simply do not have the opportunities of those born on the other side of the tracks. Um, as Latchmere councillors, our deeds have matched our words. Uh, we backed the most ambitious and far-reaching master plan. Uh, we faced up to tough conversations, I've said directly, to hundreds of residents that I think their homes should be demolished. And we were proud to agree a deal with the council where all tenants and leaseholders got new homes on the estate, where there's a new uh, school, new church, new leisure centre, and the same amount of green space is retained. And we were delighted when Sadiq Khan brought a long overdue end to the era where estate regeneration simply meant moving out existing communities to make way for unaffordable new developments. And it's reminded by Councillor Caddy, actually, uh, I shouldn't tell her this because she was the candidate, but on uh, Southfield's by-election day in 2012, a group of Labour and Tory councillors snuck off the campaign trail and went to, to Latchmere to talk about the regeneration. And we couldn't use the library because it was closed because there had been a horrible crime that day, but we were welcomed into Tenons Christian College and we had a really good discussion and we got things done. And throughout, cooperation has been excellent on both sides. However, since the deal was agreed, the council has added 500 extra units to the scheme, largely in private tower blocks, and the rebuilt estate will now only have 35% genuinely affordable housing. Crucially, crucially, the council is a 50-50 joint venture partner in this regeneration, 
and sadly that incentivizes Wandsworth to behave exactly like a property developer. The more expensive the housing is, the more profit the council makes. So instead of maximizing affordable housing on public land, Wandsworth Council is in the perverse position of trying to minimize affordable housing on public land. We were told the rate of return for the property developer on this project is currently 35%. That's around double the industry standard. The profits, therefore, will be in the hundreds of millions. The Win Stanley regeneration, make no mistake, could easily afford extra affordable homes. And the figures in the parallel Alton regeneration are even more questionable with the affordable housing in the mid-20%. We can do better because we control the land, the crucial factor in any development. Wandsworth Labour would make sure that an extra 100 of the homes in the regeneration are council homes for local people, plus similarly 70 council homes extra in the Alton scheme. This is a political choice and it simply requires political will. We'll always stand up for local people. Labour was proud to lead the community campaigns that stopped the council closing the Winstanley Estates Library, the nearby Battersea Sports Centre, and now again we're working hard with local people to save the children's centre that serves the estate. We're on their side. And when we take control of the council, we will change the regeneration plans. I want members and officers and our development partners to understand that. Many local people feel neglected. Previous promises have been broken. They see Wandsworth time and again put property developers' interests ahead of those of local people. To win their trust, we need to truly listen and to put local people at the heart of changes in their area. If the current leader is serious about cross-party support, he will make changes to his plans. If he chooses not to, he'll find our scepticism hardening and he'll see the public's opposition growing. And I say all of this more in sorrow than in anger. We want the Winstanley estate to get the regeneration it so desperately needs. But this regeneration is turning into a good deal for property developers and a bad deal for local people. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to have the opportunity of uh, concluding uh, this debate, which uh, is so much about it. It is positive, and as we alluded to earlier in some of the questions, uh, we should just be so proud as a council of what we are about to achieve. It's really very remarkable. Um, the recent groundbreaking at Shuttleworth Road uh, this week, this Monday, uh, it's the start of something really, really big, which will transform the lives of, of residents in that part of, of the borough uh, and, and bring a new, new hope of life chances, uh, sense of community and belonging which I think there is agreement across the chamber on. Um, and all of this, I'd really like to, to pay tribute to our, our fantastic staff in the housing department, uh, the consultants who have uh, contributed to it. And, and, and insofar as it has actually happened, and I do hope it continues, the uh, cooperation between political parties and perhaps above all the engagement with local people. And the leader's absence uh, perhaps gives me the opportunity to, to pay tribute to, uh, to his quiet determination on that front. He's plugged away at that year in, year out, absolutely determined that as many people as possible should be on board with this. And uh, that's been uh, recognized nationally, and he, he now has uh, contributed to a number of national uh, bodies describing what we've done here in Wandsworth. Um, these these two projects, as Councillor Caddy has already said, are virtually unique in guaranteeing the right of return of tenants and of owner-occupying leaseholders. They deliver not just, and some councillors on the opposite side, opposite side really need to take note of this, not just additional council housing, also shared ownership, new means of low-cost uh, home ownership, and eligibility for help to buy. So when you take all of that, the diversity of tenure opportunities, and all of those things are leading, will lead to more balanced communities, and it's absolutely unmatched across London. There is no other London borough who comes any, that comes anywhere close to what we're doing. So, so let's just look at a quick scorecard of where we are so far. We're only just starting, so this is going to get better. Across all tenures, and Councillor Caddy and I are both carrying a briefing document, such as our devotion to this topic, and I've just double-checked, uh, across all of the tenures, the numbers will be increasing. There is not a single housing tenure type that will be diminished in any way. So, Councillor Hogg, I'm afraid you need to take note of that, and one or two of your colleagues as well seem to be unaware of it. Um, 
And so that's 2,000 additional homes, almost 2,000 additional homes in Stanley York Road, and nearly 1,000 in Roehampton. Huge, huge numbers. Um, training and job opportunities are going to be created in both these locations, which will build on our fantastic work match achievements. Um, the youngest in these communities is going to get tremendous childcare and aspirational early year schooling. Absolute transformation. Huge investment in new community facilities, two new libraries. Sound familiar? Uh, community halls, meeting rooms, and in all of this, an emphasis on youth facilities. Uh, massive improvements in the quality of buildings. That matters so much in terms of how people react to the public realm, and we all know that impacts much more widely than, than has perhaps been appreciated in the past in Cabuzier's time. Uh, it affects crime in particular. We know that. And so Councillor Ogg's right to make the connection, uh, perhaps maybe not making the point he wanted to make. Um, I'd also like to pay tribute to the excellent work of our public health team, uh, really getting stuck in there with, in particular, healthy eating programs, healthy living workshops, really making a difference already. So all of this taken together, tremendous profound impacts on the quality of life of people who live in these two areas and, uh, and the connectivity as well. They're going to be transformed and we should be very proud of it. So I do slightly regret the negative tones struck by some, uh, some councillors' office. I think it's unfortunate uh, and I think, uh, I think it would be good if there was a bit of a correction back in the other direction. Uh, to support what we're doing because there is nowhere in London uh, where, where this is happening. Um, turning briefly to the opposition amendment, uh, I do believe this misunderstands the financial model uh, and 100 or 170, which, whichever figure you care to choose, uh, would be a grotesquely inefficient way of delivering uh, that number. Uh, and I believe you do know that, having been briefed on it at the recent uh, OSC. Um, contrast that with our, it's essentially an arbitrary number, contrast that with our much, much higher numbers uh, of all the different tenure types, which are deliverable. And we do believe we've got the balance of risk and reward uh, absolutely right. Um, so, they know that uh, that amendment wouldn't work and it would also cost enormous sums in having to reverse commitments that have already been made uh, and by which we are now legally bound. So it would be disastrous and so we're not, uh, not uh, going to do that. Um, so um, does anyone in this chamber seriously believe that it's what residents want after so much clear support from residents to, to unpick those arrangements? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think anyone on this side will, will think so. So I would... Uh, urge the defeat of the amendment and the support of the motion. Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the Labour Group Amendment on the Regeneration Proposal Motion. Agenda Item 22. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment? The amendment is lost by 24 votes to 29. The matter now before the Council is the motion on regeneration, agenda item number 22. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Those against the motion? The motion is carried by 30, 30. 30 votes to 23.